How you going, Matty? Gotcha. Not too bad. Hey, um, Starts is, he knows we're coming. I'll give him a call now, radio, and I'll give you a call back. Right, mate, thanks. Growing up, we were uh, army children, so um, yeah, we got moved every couple of years. I guess it was a pretty handy skill to learn to make, make friends and build relationships fairly quickly. I'm madly passionate about what I do, but a little bit crazy, but I think it all helps. I spend pretty much all of my time out on the road. I, um, I often get called a canary. I, I kind of forget when I walk back into branches. I do, a lot of, um, I do a lot of singing to myself and whistling to myself. I don't know, I'm pretty happy in my own little head. When we first walked into the doctor's room, all my images were up on his screen and my wife, she sort of gave me a bit of a tap on the shoulder and said, well, that poor bastard looks pretty cool. The doctor, he commented that, well, that poor bastard's sitting next to you now. About eight, nine years ago, I had a mole cut out of my back that did show some melanoma cells in it. The test results come back clear. I guess as everyone thinks, you know, the problem's now being cut out and removed. I continue to go on to get skin checks annually um, as prescribed by the doctor and nothing further was picked up. I went to a kid's soccer match and I came home. I had no pain or discomfort um, and passed a bit of blood in my urine. The diagnosis initially was that I'd passed the kidney stone. Happened again about sort of six weeks later. I uh, went back into the doctor and he sort of then decided we should probably just check it out a little bit further. It had shown up as some tumours in my brain, um, spots in my lungs, spots in, in other organs and around my ribs and so forth, uh, in the marrow in my pelvis and in my spine. Sort of half prepared myself for, for not great news, but uh, I didn't prepare myself for quite that extent. When you get diagnosed with stage four melanoma, you hear some pretty wicked stories. You know, is it gonna be three months, four months? Will I see the kids get married? Will I walk my daughter down the aisle? All those things we take for granted. Will I get to, you know, teach them how to drive a car? All those things just race through my head pretty rapidly. Sat in a lot of hospital waiting rooms and sort of thought back to my own childhood and some of my greatest memories were spending time with family. Those sort of one-on-one -on -one times with family, friends. More so than, you know, the nice clean house or the well-ironed shirts and all the other stuff that we kind of get focused on in day-to-day -day life, you know. With Janelle, she sort of struggled pretty hard, so it was um, to get her head around it all. It was a big shock and obviously a fairly big one for the whole family. We had to get her to understand it herself before we could go to the kids. It's part of my life now, so they need to understand what happens. Yeah, they're very, very, very caring children now. They look out for sort of everyone around them. The guys in the branch have been very supportive too. They've sort of picked up my workload when I haven't been able to be around. Keep in regular contact even when I do have sort of mishaps or hurdles along the way. They've been very respectful about giving me my space to deal with all this. They are my extended family and I guess all of elders to that extent. I started on immunotherapy in, in uh, early January of this year. Every three weeks I go into the um, infusion ward in Ipswich. I uh, put an IV line in and I get my treatment. So um, that's an ongoing treatment. This drug's working for now. There's no guarantee that it will keep working. So, um, Yeah, life, life's, yeah, it's, it's different now. And it's, um, yeah, I don't know when that, that stop day is. So it's pretty important you sort of make the most of every day now. So a bit of a laugh along the way. Laughter is the best medicine. That, generally sort of helps take the edge off most things, I reckon, anyway. Yeah, about a hundred reasons in about five minutes why we shouldn't go to a doctor. We're too busy, we're too this, too something else. If I can encourage just one or two other people to get in and get that treatment early before it becomes a big problem, um, yeah, I think this is worth all the time I can give it. Everything I do is, is about the family, um, whether it's Janelle or the kids, so yeah, that's, that's kind of why I get out of bed most days. That quality one-on-one -on -one time, a bit irreplaceable. I was sort of sitting in a, in a waiting room one time and listening to a mum and a daughter who was a, probably in her mid-twenties who had been in there for a cancer treatment. Um, and she just gave her daughter the biggest hug, looked her in the eyes and just sort of told her that whatever she needed to do, she had to do. I know if they're a bit off colour, they know if I'm off colour and it just, it just works. You don't worry too far into the distance. I didn't ask for an end date, so I didn't want my brain working to anything. I've um, just got to make the most of it and get up every day and live each day as if it's the last one.